let's look at the absorption and action spectrums of photosynthesis. But first, a really stupid question. A plant from the planet Xenopus, fake planet, has leaves that are a romantically blue color. What colors of the spectrum do you think are used by the plant for photosynthesis? Please explain. And what would be the name of this silly molecule responsible for the process? So this question, I'm basically asking you, why are plants green, right? Plants are green, hopefully you figured out by now, because green is the color that they do not use. So they actually absorb other colors of light and reflect green. So all the association you've made between beautiful green plants and plants uh, being green is kind of silly because they just don't use that green light. It all gets reflected away. So I think you understand that already. So if the plants were actually blue, if the plants were actually blue, then that means that blue light is actually reflected. So red and green light are primarily absorbed. And so on this hypothetical planet, um, red and green light would contain the energy wavelengths that are necessary for whatever photosynthesis if it was called that over there and the molecule might be called borophyll okay because i made that up all right so here are these two diagrams it's one is called the action spectrum of photosynthesis and the other is called the absorption spectrum um, now they look very similar right you can see peaks uh, over here and peaks over here and it's kind of low in the middle and you need to know that these wavelengths here of, of visible light um, over here on the low side, the smaller numbers, where it's the violet blue color in the middle, we have green and yellow, and then orange and red. And this is true for both of these. So you don't have to remember the wavelengths, but understanding the order of the colors is important as well too. So the first thing you gotta ask yourself is, okay, action spectrum. So action just means when photosynthesis actually happens. So percentage of use of light in photosynthesis. And you can see here that, uh, in blue or violet light, a lot of that, a lot of that light, a lot of that blue light is used. Like almost up to eighty percent of that is actually partaking in photosynthesis, contributing to photosynthesis. And over here, with orange and red light, it's above sixty percent, so it's pretty high. So in orange and red light, photosynthesis happens as well. So action spectrum is about uh, when is photosynthesis actually happening. Now, when you just shine a little bit of green light on it. Look, photosynthesis is, is really, really low here, so 20%. So green light doesn't do much for photosynthesis. But then if we look over here at the absorption spectrum, specifically for chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll is the main, is the photosynthetic pigment, right? That's the green colored substance. But if I look at chlorophyll, and I know chlorophyll is responsible for photosynthesis happening, look at what I see here. This is just two forms, so I ignore the, let's just look at it in general. Violet blue light is highly absorbed by chlorophyll, okay, highly absorbed, over 80%, especially for chlorophyll B. And orange red light is absorbed, about 50% of it gets absorbed. But look at this, in green light, virtually none, close to zero, a negligible amount of light, of green light, actually gets absorbed by chlorophyll. So this should be raising a question. If chlorophyll absorbs almost no green light, then how can there be any photosynthesis, even if it's just a tiny amount over here? Okay, that's the primary difference that you need to be uh, picking out between the characteristics of this action spectrum and the absorption spectrum when you're looking at chlorophyll, is that even though chlorophyll absorbs almost no green, uh, green light, there is still some photosynthesis happening here. So what's happening here? The answer is chlorophyll is not the only pigment. There are some other additional pigments that are contributing to this. And uh, the photosynthesis that occurs here is actually due to some of these accessory pigments. And some of these other pigments are called uh, carotene and xanthophyll. Okay, that's basically it. There are other pigments that are also absorbing light energy. Uh, most of it is done by chlorophyll, and so most of that light that gets reflected back is actually uh, green light. It gets rejected. That's why plants look green. All right, what do you yell out if you are swimming in the ocean and you get trapped by a bunch of seaweed? This is really stupid. Kelp! Here is an action and absorption spectrum for kelp. Now, the, dot, the, the solid line here is the action spectrum. So you can see that photosynthesis happens uh, in blue light and in green light. It drops off a little bit, and it up, but it still happens in uh, orangey red light as well, too. 
And then the absorption spectrum for kelp is also pretty high. So this can't be just chlorophyll, right? Because I know the absorption spectrum for, for chlorophyll would leave out uh, a lot of the, the green light. So there are some other things. And we learned about the accessory pigments previously. There's some carotene, possibly. There's some uh, xanthophyll. And there's another one which I'm kind of afraid to pronounce, but I'm going to show it to you here. So chlorophyll is involved. Carotene is involved. And this other one here is also involved, another type of accessory pigment. Fucosanthines. I think that's the way to say it. Fucosanthines. And so you can deduce the color of algae. Well, you probably already know what algae looks like. But anyways, if I deduce the colors and I can see that most of these waveforms, most of this visible light is actually being absorbed, then uh, a little bit less green. So maybe some green is being reflected, but a lot of it is being absorbed. And so you should end up with a fairly dark color, maybe a dark green. And that just happens to be the color of algae, kind of brownish uh, dark greenish. So that's it. The differences between the action and the absorption spectrums and uh, the significance of them as well. I hope that helped.